Hey guys, this is Jeremy from Production Bin. Today we're going to be covering how to record audio in FL Studio. I'm going to show you all the components you need and then I'm going to take you through the process of how to record a vocal and how to record an electric guitar. I'll also show you a little bit up front about how to make sure that the audio interface is set up correctly within FL Studio. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I have a very simple, affordable SM57 dynamic microphone, the cable that I'm going to be using to put that in, as well as a pair of headphones, and the audio interface, which is a USB interface. I take one end of the microphone cable, and I plug that into channel one on the audio interface. And I leave that set up all the time so that channel one is always the microphone that I'm working with. Um, and on this particular interface, the 48 volt button is right here. That's for phantom power, but I'm using the SM57. So I'm not going to turn on that uh, 48 volt uh, button here. And then this is the knob to turn the gain up and down for channel one. All right, so now that we've got everything set up on the audio interface, we're gonna come into FL Studio to actually make sure that the audio interface is set up correctly. So we're gonna press F10, which will bring up the settings panel. We're gonna go into audio. And what you wanna do is on this input and output tab, you're gonna look under device and you're gonna go down to this drop down menu. And what you should see once you've plugged your audio interface in is that you have uh, this direct sound devices and ASIO devices. And what you want to look for is the ASIO device that is closest to the name of the audio interface that you have. So mine is the AudioBox i2 by Presonus. So the AudioBox ASIO driver is the one that I want to select. So after I've selected the driver, I'm going to come down here to this buffer size. And buffer size is just a term that's used for making sure that the audio interface has enough <coughs> room to be able to record and process all this stuff without creating clicks and pops in the software and the audio that you're putting together. And what you want to try to do is get the buffer size as low as you can when you are recording without it introducing clicks and pops and then if it causes problems once you start mixing, you can actually raise up the buffer size to a higher level because that doesn't affect it as much. So the higher the size of the buffer, the more delay it introduces in. So if you were recording and you had the buffer up this high, you would hear your voice on a delay while you're recording. So you want to try to get it as small as you can. I found that 256 works well for me and doesn't introduce the clicks and the pops. So that, that works well. Um, and then we will go ahead and load up a project. All right. So now I'm going to show you how to come inside of the program and record a vocal. So I've opened up a project that I've been working on and I have a simple chorus section that I've been already working on for a little while and I wanted to add some background vocals to it. So I'll let you hear a snippet of what it sounds like right now. This is completely unmixed. There's no effects on anything. This is just all of the raw material that's in the project right now. All right, so you get that sense of, of what's going on in the project. So I'm gonna come over here and open up the mixer by pressing F9. I'm gonna come over here to channel 14 because it's an open channel. And I'm going to go over to this drop down menu to select input one because that's where I put the microphone at to record for this project. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now you'll see when I speak into the microphone, you'll see a signal coming up over here. So check, check, one, two, check, one, two, check, check. So you'll notice that when I was speaking into the microphone, it was hitting somewhere in this 12 to 18 range. That's a good rule of thumb range to use for when you're recording vocals. It'll give you a good usable signal. Um, I'm gonna be recording just a background vocal for this. So this channel I'm gonna name as a background vocal channel. So I'm gonna right click here. I'm gonna say rename color and icon. 
I'm going to say BGV for background vocal. And then I'm going to click on this color panel and choose like a dark blue. And I just use the same color all the time whenever I'm doing vocals so that I know exactly what kind of file that I'm working with. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is come down here to this arm recording button or arm disc recording. I'm going to right click on it and that's going to open up this file folder and I'm going to name the file BGV chorus one because I'm recording the background vocal for chorus one. And this just helps me keep track of what clips I'm recording in the moment, especially when I'm going back through and mixing the project. So I'll go ahead and click save. And now you can see that the button is red, which means it's armed for recording. So we'll come back out here to the playlist. What I'm going to do is actually back this up just a touch so that when I start recording, it gives me a little bit of runway before I actually have to start singing. Um, and I like to do that just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room before I start recording. And so that the program doesn't cut anything off that I sing right at the beginning. Uh, you'll also notice that I have this button selected, which is a countdown. So it'll click in a couple of times before it starts recording. You'll notice that I'm in song mode. I have to be in song mode in order to record into the playlist. So now I'm armed and ready. I'm going to pick up the mic and I'm going to go ahead and do this take on the background vocal. So I'll hit this record button here and we'll get rolling. So I'll go ahead and press the space bar when I'm done. And then I'll unclick this button over here and that's the record button. So everything is saved and you'll see that this BGV, I'm going to control and click it. And if I hold down shift and bring it down, you'll see that it's recorded this file right here in the program. So let's press Y. And that'll turn into a preview tool, which is this tool right up here. It's a playback tool. So when you press it, it'll just play what you've recorded. Keep on running till the break of day. Run away. So you can see what I've recorded. And that actually had some plosives on it. So I would probably go back and re record that. But in the context of the song, if you listen over here, you should be able to hear the um, the channel that we just recorded or the clip that we just recorded so now that's ready for me to be able to process that through mixing or through anything else so if I were to come back over to the channel rack F6, I could then take this vocal and go back over here and maybe drop this vocal into this channel. So I would press control L and that would bring in that clip that I just created. So when I play it, you'll see that it's pegging in here. And now that that's in there, I could come in and do EQ on it. So I could do whatever I wanted to in here. And then I could maybe add a compressor in there. Um, so I might use the free limiter as a compressor. And then I could start processing that background vocal to get it to sound the way that I want it to sound. But for right now, I'm not going to do that. So let's just go ahead and right click and reset the selected tracks to default. Say, okay, I'm gonna take this out of the mixer. And the next thing that we're going to move on to is actually recording a another electric guitar part. So let's get set up for that. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is 
take this quarter inch cable, this end of it, and plug it into channel two. And this is the channel that I use to record all the instruments that I plug in via quarter inch. Uh, so the other end of that will go into the electric guitar. Now this audio interface has a button um, over here on this side, which is for uh, electric instruments like bass and electric guitar. And I do have that turned on, but you'll notice that I don't have this one turned on, which is for channel um, one. Uh, so I just have the button for channel two. And then this dial right here is the gain uh, for channel two. So it controls the gain for whatever's plugged into this one. We just finished up recording a background vocal for the track. And now let's go ahead and jump into the mixer and I'll show you how to set up for the electric guitar. So I press F9, I come over here to this channel on channel 13, and I use this drop down menu to select input two, which is where I've input my guitar into. And I went ahead and loaded up Guitar Rig, which is what I'm using to create the sound that I will be um, using for the recording. And this is what it kind of sounds like. So that's the tone that we'll be using for this particular one. So what you'll notice here, we're gonna do the same basic process that we did for the background vocal. One thing to notice is uh, we recorded on background vocal and the track is still armed right now, which means that if we were to go up here and record, it would automatically be trying to record the background vocal again. And we don't want that. We just want to record the electric guitar. So let's go ahead and get things set up for the electric. We'll right click on this arm disc recording. We're going to call it electric. I'm going to call it lead for chorus one. And so this is armed. I'm going to color code this and name this as electric two. And I'm going to choose this color here. So now that is named and color coded uh, and, and we should be ready to go. So, all I'm really doing on this is creating a, um, a copy of what I've already played here. I'm just going to do that again with this second tone, and then I'll end up being able to use that and pan that uh, left and right in the recording. So the tone's just a touch different. Again, I'm going to back this thing up just a touch and then I'm gonna press R to start recording. So now you'll see that this, this track right here is the one that we just ended up recording. And what you'll notice with um, FL Studio is it will cram the audio into whatever slot is available, the, the highest available slot, wherever that might be. It'll put that file there. And a good way to move it around without screwing up where it's laying in the process instead of just dragging this around you can actually control and click it, it'll turn red, and then you can use your shift and your arrow keys, up and down arrow keys, and that'll let you move it around. And then when you're done, you can press control and D, which will deselect it, and that'll put it into a different spot. So now, if I press Y, we're gonna be using the preview tool to listen to what we just recorded. Oops, I forgot to unarm the recording. Ha ha. So always remember to Unclick that, otherwise it'll start recording again when you press the space bar. So let's listen to what we recorded just now.
let's listen to it in the context of the song itself. So what you'll see that I did is I jumped over to the channel rack and just brought the volume down so that it wasn't so overbearing in the actual mix. And that's just a basic volume mixing just to get the balance and levels right for those things. And the other thing that I could do is maybe use the panning to put one of those leads to the right side and one of those leads to the left side. Um, so let's just do that real quick. So this one, we'll put that one to the left. So let's bring that volume down. Let's put this one to the right. And then let's take that one to the left. And now let's listen to it. You should be able to hear, uh, let's just do this. If you right click on something on over here, it'll mute out everything else. And then if you left click, it'll bring in something else that you want to work with. So let's listen to just these two electric guitars. Now they're panned left and right. So that just spreads the tone out a lot and gives you just a little bit more of a, a wide sound for that. Now we'll play it in context again. And so that's the process that I go through as I'm recording different instruments. So whether it's a bass or an acoustic guitar or the electrics, you can see that I, I set up channels for each one of those types and then I record them so that as they're recorded into the playlist, they're color coded, they're named, and everything is kind of situated to where at a quick glance, I know what it is that I'm working with. Well guys, I hope that that was super helpful for you. We have come to the end of the three part series and learning the basics of FL Studio. I've showed you how to navigate the program and what the workflow looks like. We've learned how to create drum patterns and load in samples. We've loaded instruments. We've recorded MIDI for drums and instruments. And I've showed you how to record audio in FL Studio, like your vocals or an instrument, a live instrument like an electric guitar. And now you have all of these tools in your arsenal to be able to create songs. And I wanna ask you just one question. And that is, what do you feel like you want to learn about or need to know about next in order to help you grow and become a better songwriter and producer? I'd love for you to leave that in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next round.